Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Wooly, and this is my adventure. Let's recap. We set out on this journey with the goal of becoming a prayer skiller. To this end, we made use of an obscure method that involved delivering letters for the wise old man. We then managed to obtain the torn prayer scroll. We continued to find luck with the ham joint, stale baguette, and many other clue items. After some super not fun construction, we can now store our loot. Which brings us to today. Here we're kicking things off with some clue hunting. We're still chasing a complete set of the vestment robes. With a full set, we'll be able to freely store and withdraw the items from our house. Here we find a master clue. I'd love to complete one of these. It's a pretty long walk, but maybe it'll be worth it. Oh. It was in fact not worth it. Back on the hunt, we find another casket. I'm glad we built that clue storage. We seem to attract uniques. And a red elegant skirt at a 1 in 2800 drop rate. Next was a pretty full reward, with two uniques and a master clue. However, this was another step we couldn't do. And another elegant item a few caskets later. We scored a fashion win, with the beekeeper boots to match the vestment robes. And we followed that up with an iron skirt G. For the sake of matching, I decided to get the shield in the next casket. With all of those clues, we'd finally reached level 60 thieving. And I think it's time for a change of pace. Let's go clean up some of our other skills. We quickly picked up 50 woodcutting, followed by 50 fire making, unlocking winter tot. Here we can receive supply crates. These can reward us with an outfit, as well as a few other useful items. We can also earn a few combat tasks at this minigame. First KC pet? Maybe? Maybe? So close. After a series of unlucky supply crates, I wanted to make sure that our iron luck was still active. Looks like our luck still works, giving us a Guthix robe top. And a double unique on the next casket. Followed by a Ceridoman robe in the next one. A short while later, we also found a Bob shirt. We then received a red elegant top, which completed our set. This allows us to freely withdraw and deposit the items. We returned for more fire making. And as we made our way through the next couple of milestones, the outfit continued to evade us.
In anticipation of our new fire-making outfit, I decided to store our current items. An extra clue wouldn't hurt. And red elegant legs, making our complete set more complete-er. After a few more clues, we have our magic switch with the staff of Bob. We also found a wizard hat to match. And then I got distracted. I was looking at the quests for this build and I thought, I could do that. What I didn't really consider was that I have lots of stuff with not a lot of energy and I'm walking into 50 wilderness. But there is a reason we're here. The rogues out here can reward you with a poison iron dagger when pickpocketing. Thankfully, we got it really quickly. Time to run! I'll be using this against the Guardian and the Monk during the quest Priest in Peril. Easy peasy. So we met up with the king and offered our professional services. I started off using our prayer, but I ended up switching to flinching. First fight down, on to the next. I opted for flinching here as well. Because the monk attacks with both magic and melee, this method will be safer. Everything was looking good. And then he arrived. 28 Ace Steel. My nemesis. We managed to land a hit on the monk, but competition is fierce in these parts. We tried to impart some of our wisdom, though it fell on robot ears. Foiled again. In an effort to not get tilted, we changed focus to another quest for now. We grab some meat, beat a bear, and turned our meat blue for some old men. In return, they taught us how to make potions. This will allow us to solo Winter Todd. But before returning, I thought I'd share my super elite method for training Herblore. I am... I'm lying. Herblore is booty, and if you have some tips, please save me in the comments. I mostly fumbled my way through this stack of guams to clear some more space. We did manage to finish off the stack, bringing us to 25 Herblore. And Jagex just announced a new Herblore method, so I'm excited to see how this helps our account. It was time to return to the frozen front line. Here we continue to have amazing luck with supply crates. Consistency is key, or something like that. Levels begin to rack up, though without so much as a single piece of our new outfit. Until we finally found our first piece at 75 fire making. Coming in with 77 fire making. 
and another set of gloves. That's just what we needed. 78 fire making. And we find our second piece with the torch. A little while later, we'd reached level 80 fire making. Along the way, we'd also managed another combat task. Awesome, our third pair of gloves. And a second torch. But at least we hit 85 fire making. Great, our third torch. Sweet, our fourth torch. I love this game. Back with some more hand members, we hit 64 thieving. This grants us access to the lizard man chests. These have the chance to reward us with medium clues, the Xerix talisman, and the fangs used to charge it. Now, I could tell you that this method was fast, or fun, but it was neither of those things. The low success rate, along with the chance to be teleported outside, made for a less than ideal grind. A couple of levels later, We've hit 66 thieving, and have made a whopping 12k gold in profit. Thankfully, we've gathered over 80 fangs for our eventual talisman. After a couple more minutes, we finally found our target. And by using this with the fangs we've collected, we now have teleports to various sites around Zaya. After more than a few distractions, we return to Winter Todd. Starting out with 59 construction, this has been much faster than running oak planks. Just what we needed, our fourth pair of gloves. And here's 89 fire making, and 90. The levels came and went, and we didn't find any new collection log slots. With 92 fire making, we are officially halfway to 99. We might have good luck with clue scrolls, but our winter Todd luck leaves much to be desired. Oh, I guess I just had to complain. Our sixth torch. Lovely. And a couple more levels in fire making. After over a million XP since the last item, we finally found the hood. There's now only two more pieces remaining. Coming in with level 95, I'm beginning to think we're going to have the cape before the set. The best game. Not letting Winter Todd hold us down, we pushed on with 65 construction. And our seventh torch. Let's go. We might actually find the whole set. Only one more piece to find. Almost there, with level 96 fire making. At long last, we have finally found every piece of the outfit. It might be a little late, but I'm happy to complete the set. 
my friends invited us along for another raid, and we were able to complete the last points needed for the easy tier of combat tasks. No purples here, but maybe next time. What does the hilt give you? I'm glad you asked. Aside from looking awesome, it also rewards a 5k XP lamp and a teleport function taking you to the God Wars entrance. We're going to use this lamp on Herblore as it's currently the most difficult for us to train. And that brings us to level 34. And 98 fire making, just one more. As you may have noticed, we've escaped Winter Todd. And with that log, we've hit 99 fire making. We did get the outfit, but it seems our iron luck doesn't include Wintertot. Eventually I'd love to complete the collection log, but for now, there's more exciting things to do. Till next time, stay safe out there, stay you.